new video on the app builder certification questions as well as answers so this video i want to share one more thing that i have a complete set of questions and answers for the summer 2020 and winter 2021 and if you need a copy of it just drop me an email and we'll see how that goes from there okay so moving on as usual please do hit subscribe button and bell icon to get notification on the upcoming videos and let's get started okay which capability allows an app builder to grant object level access we have to choose two answers one is assigning a user uh, a profile that allows read access to an object and assigning a user a permission set that allows read and edit access to an object which looks good and the third one is assigning role that allows user read access i don't think because from the role level you can only have record level access not the object level access and assigning a user <coughs> public group that allows read and edit access to an object and again you know public group cannot grant you any object level access but whatever record you have access it can you know kind of reroute or if a part of the group that can be shared with you so the correct answer i would say is a and b so to let's go to the salesforce document side and we'll see how we can justify this okay here i am at the profile so as it clearly says profile defines how user access objects and data and what they can do within the application <clears throat> and when you create users you assign a profile to each one of them yes as you know the profile is mandatory but for a an user and role is not so without role user can exist but not without a profile so and uh, it gives user access to objects okay so if i open role so your role is basically about you know granting access to the data salesforce orgs data as it says and it's mainly the records and the reports it's not the object but records and the report and if we create role hierarchy you know based on their manager or subordinate relationship you can see all the records at the manager level so it's something like that even at the public even public group level also it's more about you know access to the data than to an object so that's why a and b have the right answer that is granting an object uh, level access from the profile and permission set permission set again you know you give at the user level there is something which you cannot give at the profile level because if you give it profile level it will be for the all users but you can grant additional object access in the permission set so that's why permission set a and b so moving on universal container uses a custom object to track expense reports and it wants automatically post updates on the records feed whenever an expense report has been approved which social feature can be used to accomplish this a quick feed action um i don't think so because even if you, if you create a quick feed action you have to you know click it or trigger it in any other way like you know manual intervention is required i believe and approval process no i don't think you can any you know post a record feed in the approval process and feed tracking yes because you know if you enable the feed tracking on so and so column on that object it will automatically track what are the changes happened if someone is following that record they will get updates in their feed and auto response rule no so it's the feed tracking is the right answer for this question so let's go ahead and check the documentation what it says the feed tracking detects the changes to the tracked record field and posts them as update in what i follow feed users who follow that record see these updates in their view <coughs> of what i follow with one exception i don't know what is this updates users make themselves aren't posted to what i follow okay whoever <coughs> others who has updated that they will be getting in what i follow not what they update so okay this is the right answer feed tracking let's go to the next question 
<clears throat> which three Salesforce functionalities are ignored when processing the field updates in workflow rules and approval process? <clears throat> so we have to choose three. So the field level security, yes. Why? Because you know you might have updated some status field which you have access, but workflow can trigger on the status field and update some other field which you don't have access to. So the field level security and multiple currencies i don't think that will be ignored and even the decimal places and the character limits uh, that's a, a kind of a data type issue but it will not ignore if you try to enter a text in a number field it will fail and validation rules des even validation rules because validation rules will be executed before the workflow so it will not uh, we know be considered when you run the workflow update, it won't consider the validation rules. Not exactly for that, but yeah, it doesn't consider the validation rules. Even if, if you uh, try to violate any validation rule, and I don't think the filter workflow can trigger that validation rule when you're updating it from the workflow. And also, the uh, no record type pick list value, if you have few record types on your record, I think workflow will. Uh, only work on the master record type, not the other ones. Even though if we have that biggest value not available for that record type, it can update the other biggest value which is not available for this record type. So these three are the right answers. So I didn't find the exact reference for this. It's not you know captured in the document. I didn't find it in the, any of the Salesforce documentation. So I don't know what to show you, but these are the right answers as per my experience and understanding. Moving on, Universal Container wants to test the code against a subset of production data that is under 5 GB. Additionally, Universal Containers want to refresh the sandbox every weekend. Which type of the sandbox should be used to accomplish this? Developer, Developer Pro, or full or partial copy so they say they want the data that is under 5 GB and they want to refresh it every weekend so it should be developer and developer pro are within one or three days and full copy sandbox you have to refresh every 30 days but I think it's uh, partial copy which is the right answer which is under 5 GB and which can be refreshed every weekend. So let's go check out the right answer, which is D. Let me take you to the reference document as well. So here we are at the sandbox licenses and storage limits by type article. And here you can see this is the edition wise. And here you can see the sandbox type refresh interval and storage limit. So for developer sandbox, we have one day and 200 MB is the maximum and even for the developer pro we have one day but it has one GB and partial copy is the one which has five days which is nothing but close to a week uh, and data storage is 5 GB that's why you know the partial copy sandbox is the right answer and full sandbox is 29 days that is like kind of monthly so partial copy a universal container's account object has a master detail relationship with an invoice custom object. The app builder would like to change to a lookup field but is not able to do so. What could be causing this issue? The account record includes invoice rollup summary fields. Yes, possible. The account is included in the workflow on the invoice object. No, if it is then the invoice, I don't think it will prevent from creating. Up to master. Sorry, master detail to look up. Okay, and invoice must have at least one master detail field for reporting. No, <clears throat> I don't think that is criteria. And invoice records have existing values in the account. Uh, no, that is also not required. So I would say the correct answer is account record includes invoice roll up summary fields. So A is the right answer. And let's go to the documentation and check out. So here we are at the roll-up summary field documentation. So I think there's somewhere here. Yeah, I marked it. So after you have created roll-up summary field on an object, you cannot convert the object, convert 
the object's mass detail relationship into recovered relationship. So it is clear and straightforward that it's because of a roll up summary field. So the correct answer here is A. The account record includes inverse roll up summary fields. That's why you will not be able to convert to look up. Question is Universal Container has created the custom objects candidate and interview in Salesforce to track candidates and data respectively. The company wants to track the total number of interviews a candidate has gone through on the candidate record wow. without writing any code. Okay, which two actions should an app builder take to accomplish this requirement? We have to choose two answers. So, first one. A use roll up summary field on the candidate record to show the total number of the interviews. Yes, and before that, it has to be used master detail relationship between the candidate and interview. So, it's straightforward A and B is the right answer, but normally, you know, you would get a question like why in lookup relationship you cannot calculate number of children. So, in a declarative way, as this question is asking, it's not possible to you know calculate using the formula field the number of child in the lookup relationship but only through trigger or the visual force in line you can do it so that's why the straightforward answer is a and b must retail relationship and roll up summary field and to show the related documentation part let me take you to the roll up summary field and here you can see you can perform the different types of the calculations with roll-up summary field you can count number of detailed records related to the master record so this is pretty straightforward i mean <clears throat> you know in any certification you would get questions on the master detail relationship for sure so that is very important so yeah let's go to the next question Universal container has a junction object called invoices with the primary master detail relationship with accounts and a secondary master relationship with contacts. Okay, the app builder has a requirement to change the primary master detail relationship to look up. Okay, what happens to the master detail relationship? Okay, here we have uh, you know account invoices master detail relationship and then contact invoices master detail relationship with the junction object and if we make the primary master detail relationship lookup um, you know the other master detail relationship becomes primary so the correct answer would be d contact master detail becomes the primary and uh, let me show you this one as well so here you can see in the consideration of relationship you have all relationship limit and converting relationship self relationship let me come down to the many to many relationship since it's a junction object involved this is this becomes many to many relationship and here you know it says you know the first master detail relationship you create on your junction object becomes a primary relationship this affects the following okay um, I and what if and here the second master detail relationship you create on your junction object becomes secondary relationship. If you delete the primary master detail relationship or convert it to a lookup relationship, the secondary master detail master object becomes the primary. So here he, D is the right answer. Next question is where can a custom button be placed and choose three answers. So user object no custom list view person account and related list is true and web to case no so the correct answer would be b c d e and why this is sorry b c d and why not user object and web to case uh, let me show you because it's a limitation this is custom button and link consideration article and if you come down you can see the under limitation the custom buttons are not available for web to lead, web to case, case teams related list or the user object. 
so here we have the option user object and web to case that's why i think remaining three are the right answer and you can additionally you can also check in this document like where all if you read this part you can get to know like where all this can be used so the correct answer is b c d universal container has separated business requirement from the consumer and business opportunities the sales team work with both types of opportunities the app builder has created two types two record types on opportunity object okay what action can now be performed choose two <clears throat> okay so the first answer a prevent <clears throat> access to secure data fields by sales process no i don't think it's possible and b specify the different page layout by sales process I, this is one of the very main intent of the record type like creating the different page layout and also like uh, you know filtering the big list values use subset of the big list values by record type so these are the two values so b is the right answer and d is not the right answer i can say because there is a limitation which I can show you. I'll show you now. Create unique opportunity stage by sales process, which you cannot do because that is, you know, let me show you. Oops. So the correct answer is B and C. B specify different page layout by sales process, and C enable field validation by sales process. And why D is not <clears throat> the right answer? Let's go back to this document. Oops, where did I go? Yeah. Here, if you come to the limitations, if you scroll down, like you can see that these pick list fields aren't available for the record types because they are used exclusively for sales process, lead process, support, and solution processes, which are those fields. It's opportunity stage, case status, solution status, and lead status. So the opportunity stage is not available by the sales process you cannot create unique opportunity stages by the sales process so that's why b and c is the right answer and that's the end of this please do subscribe and bell icon notification and also like i said in the beginning of this video like if you're interested in getting the complete set of answers questions for all the questions there are 200 questions so you can feel free to drop me an email and let's see how we can take it from there okay that's all